In this video, we will take a look at the deletion operation in the linked list. Specifically, deleting from the end of a linked list. I will give the example on one side and write the code on the other. So, let's start by defining this function. I'm calling this function delete end since we are deleting from the end of the linked list. This function will have no input parameters and it will return the node which we are going to delete. So let's look at the few cases we can encounter when performing the delete end operation. The first case is when the list is empty. When the list is empty, there is no element for us to delete. In such a case, we don't want to continue with our function and we would like to return. So let's see how we are going to code that. So if start is equal to null, we say that the list is empty. In such a case, we don't want to continue and we want to return. I am returning a null value since we have already defined our return type as node, but we could not find the node which we want to delete. So we will return null value. Now we have looked at what to do in the case when the list is empty. Let's look at the next case. The next case is when there is one element remaining. When there is one element remaining and we are going to delete that one element, this means the queue is the linked list is going to be empty once again. In such a case, we need to reinitialize start and end back to null. So, if this is our list with only one node, which is both the start and the end, and we are going to delete this one element remaining, then we must reinitialize start and end both to null. So, if start is equal to end, then the first thing we must do is we need to store this node which we are going to delete in some variable. So let me say node x is going to equal to start. After having done this, we need to initialize start and end back to null. After we do this and we have ensured that the linked list has become empty, then we can return the node which we were going to delete. Return x. With this, we have also taken a look at the second case which we can encounter. Let's look at the next case. The next case is when we have a list which has more than one element. So let me look at an example of that. So this is what our list looks like now. Now what we want to do is we want to delete this element. So the first thing I'm going to do to delete that element is I'm going to reinitialize or update my end pointer. 
So when I delete this element, this no longer becomes my end. I will move end to this space. Before I do that, since I am going to delete this element, I will store that in a node variable. Say node y is going to equal to end. I am doing this because this is the element I want to delete. Finally, I will have to return this element. So the next thing I am going to do is, I don't want this to be my end anymore. I want just the previous element to end to now equal to that end. So what am I doing here? I am updating end as end is equal to end.previous. Now when I am at this node, I don't want any node to be a successor to the end. So what does this mean? I don't want any value in the next address. So I will remove whatever existing value is there in end.next and I am going to replace it with null. This means that this does not point to anything else, that this is the end of the list. So what am I doing? I am saying end.next is equal to null. Now let's take a look at what this, uh, what this list looks like now. So now we have successfully deleted the last element from this linked list. Now we can return that element which we have deleted. So I am going to return y. With this we have come to the end of our function and we can close the function.